Hey First Pres, What's Up is coming to you from First Presbyterian Church in York, Pennsylvania, providing pertinent and helpful information, inspiration, and encouragement in these challenging times. Welcome back to Hey First Brez, What's Up? And I'm Guy Dunham, your host for today's episode. And it is my pleasure and honor to introduce our guest today, Kyle Gorin. But we've agreed we're going to call you KG, aren't we? Yep, it was a nickname in high school, so I'll take it. Well, that's good because we can only have one Kyle in here. Right, right. I get it, I get it. He came first. Yes. (laughs) Yes, he did, Kyle. Yeah. But it's so good, KG, to have you here this morning. He is our new Director of Communications and Media at First Presbyterian Church. Welcome on board. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. It hasn't even been a month, has it? Um, around there, yeah. I'm not 100% sure what it actually is, but yeah, it's been around a month. Well, time flies say. when you're having fun, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. You're trying to learn it all oh, and yeah. get yeah. it all together, plus you're holding down a full-time job? Uh, no, no, another part-time job. Oh, so, it's another part-time so job. So I'm part-time here, and then I have a part-time job elsewhere as well. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, good, because we don't want to wear you out. Right. No. No, I'm, I'm young. I, I can handle it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, Tom, for taking the time today. I know you came from work, and you yeah. had to get cleaned up a little bit. Right. Yeah. Came over here, but uh, thanks so much. And really, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, this it's my pleasure awesome. to be here. We have a lot to talk about today, and as you and I know, uh, some things in the future, but we may mention that later on about the possibility of a documentary. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, uh, under normal circumstances, I would simply ask you how things are going, but these aren't normal circumstances. Are they, KG? No, not at all. (laughs) No, it's it's quite a time to be coming here, but... um, it's great to have you because we're also excited about the opportunities we have and uh, it's neat that God has called you to be a part of that so um, so how are you doing in just in general with the pandemic and dealing with it yeah I mean I think for most people like most people it's been tough yeah. you know it's it's um, kind of being you know not having as many plans on the weekend and yeah. um, not being able to do as much and I, I know that's loosening a bit here you know and in you know certain places um, but you know yeah it's, it's been difficult but I was you know um, able to you know have have my job have my other job and then also able to um, take on the role here um, so I've, I've been actually pretty fortunate um, especially compared to others so um, it's been okay you know I, I'm also a little um, have been a little um, separated from my family because they're about an hour and a half away. I was going to ask where yeah. your family is from. Yeah, so I'm originally from Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania. Sealands Grove, okay. Yeah, so it's an hour and a half north. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my family had been all back there. And, you know, since some of the things, some of the restrictions have um, lightened up a little bit, I've been able to go see them a couple times, okay. you know, from a distance and stuff like that. But, yeah. you know, it's, it, you know it, it's not quite the same still but it, it's something you know yeah. there for a while I hadn't seen them for quite a while but yeah so I'm doing better now I would say yeah and now that things are starting to you know and, and I was saying you know yesterday um, it's it's been two you know two months and it's gone by really fast that we've been you know under these kind of COVID-19 restrictions and, yeah you know it's already kind of you know it's almost the end of May already so it's becoming the new normal. Yeah, we which don't want is it weird. To be, but yeah, it is right now. yeah, mm, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, so you're from Sealands Grove, but you um, you went to Messiah College, I understand. Yeah. So actually, I spent a year uh, out of high school at Shippensburg University. Oh, okay. Um, so I went to Shippensburg with some friends, and it really just wasn't my thing. It really wasn't. I don't think it was the right school for me. Okay. Not that I hated it necessarily. Right. Know, it wasn't the worst time of my life right. by any stretch, but it just wasn't, you know, that perfect fit. So um, after my first year, I spent a full year uh, f- 
I transferred to Messiah College and then ended up doing I ended up doing four years there. Just with transferring and stuff, it kind of I needed an extra year to kind of finish some credits up and stuff. Okay. Um, and so yeah, I, I graduated. Uh, it's been a year now. It was last May. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated with a degree in film and media arts from Messiah College. So. And what attracted you to Messiah when you left Shippensburg? Yeah, I think it was the faith-based okay. uh, aspect. And I mean, and I, I could kind of get the sense, but I really felt that when I got there. It's just a whole different community. You know, not everyone at Shippensburg was, not to bash the school or anything, but it's just not as no, seemingly but, welcoming as a, of an environment. It's a secular and, school. Right, right. And I just, I felt like, you know, a lot of people can go to a secular school like that and still have a strong relationship. Right. I felt important. It was important for me, for myself, that I, I ended up at Messiah. So, Am I, am I asking what your faith tradition is? I, I originally, I, I grew up United Methodist. Okay. So, yeah. So I was actually kind of surprised that there's some things that aren't too different from the Presbyterian Church yeah. and how the services run and stuff like that. I was kind of surprised at how similar the services run here compared to the service from uh, my home church. So, okay. Um, but, you know, there's obviously differences and stuff. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I grew up, a United Methodist. So. I've, I've served with a lot of um, United Methodist pastors in a variety of ways, especially ecumenical endeavors. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, we're, we're all cousins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, welcome on board. Yeah, thank you. And uh, once again, so you were a major in uh, communications, in film developing and that? Film and media arts, yep. Did you always yeah. want to do that or something started? Well, actually, that's, that's interesting. Um, I, when I transferred to Messiah, I was undeclared at Shippensburg. I didn't have a major. Okay. Um, and so <clears throat> I transferred to Messiah and joined the youth ministry program um, okay. because I had spent the summer before, the summer in between transferring I'd spent working at a, at a summer camp um, on their summer staff, okay, um, and loved it, and you know, kind of thought, oh, I, you know, I could kind of see myself being a youth uh, pastor, and I don't, I don't know if I could really explain what it was, but it just that also again didn't feel quite right, mm -hmm. um, and I had always kind of had a pull towards film and media. Okay. I had, you know, throughout high school and stuff, I'd been, you know, like a, a film nerd. I always say, and I, you know, was. Came became, kind of became a little obsessed with it and stuff, mm. and um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the the pool. And um, so I, I changed my major um, halfway through my first year at Messiah, and um, then yeah, I ended up staying with the film major throughout uh, the rest of my college career. So, okay. Yeah. And have you always wanted to be in a church-related communications position? I think it, it was when I got farther into the major, it was all like, what can I do with this? And I thought that that would be kind of perfect. Okay. You know, that I love that um, ministry setting and I love, you know, I could see myself in a ministry okay. setting in some capability, you know, in some way. And so that, that kind of was a pool, you know, it was like, I, I, I feel like I can use the these skills that I've learned from my major and from my degree um, and be looking for something that will help me um, incorporate that into a church ministry so because okay. I know I've known people over the years who wanted to go into film and development but they specifically went to the secular world right. because they wanted to be a Christian witness in a secular right. uh, industry which got to be tough yeah that, that's not easy yeah not that you know. Not that I wouldn't be interested in that. That does mm -hmm. sound. That sounds like a challenge, and you know, right. Um, but like a welcomed challenge, you know. Yeah. Might be good to get experience right. in your belt for a while. True. True. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, and today with the media, the way it is, it's 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 a crazy, crazy. Absolutely. World yeah. As it develops, for good and for not so good. Right. Absolutely. So. You eventually um, found out about this position. What attracted you to this particular position? This does sound like a job. Right, I know, right? I'm yeah. sorry if it does. <laughs> no, no, I have interviewed like, people yeah, over no, the jobs. Okay. But. Um, 
What, yeah, what attracted me? I would say it was, um, well, first talking, you know, ch you know, you do that initial checking out the church itself, and right. it seemed like a pretty healthy church, and a church that... We think we are. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, you know, and talking with uh, Pastor Kyle and Pastor Allison, um, they just, like, they seem to be very warm people, and, and um, you know, just, just their their demeanor and, and the way they treated me, you know, with a lot of respect. Um, even though, you know, I'm a college graduate recently, you know, I, I didn't have a whole lot of actual, like, I had experience through my training in school and mm -hmm. the hands-on experience I got there and my internship, but I, you know, still young and, you know, new, and they still treated me with a lot of, you know, respect. And, you know, I, I so I was really drawn to that as well. And, you know, obviously, since I've started, I haven't been able to actually meet, um, you know, as many people as, no, you know, I really could, right, because of, you know, when I came on, it was already kind of in, a, in lockdown in a bit, mm -hmm. you know, so I've only met a, a certain number of, of people, and, you know, so I'm, obviously, I'm very eager to meet everybody um, that I can here, so, but. Well, I'll just say we're all the same. Yeah. <laughs> actually, um, I, I, I do hope you get the opportunity um, to meet our congregation as a whole. Of course, our congregation would love to be able to come together again. Right. Right now, it's just not feasible, right. obviously. Right. Um, but I would, I would think that you would find it very, very welcoming. Yeah, and everything I've heard from, you know, I, I, I speak mostly with Pastor Kyle because I, I report directly to him, but um, everything he's told me, it's just, I mean, his face lights up when he talks about the congregation. And, cool. You know, I can tell he... And I can tell also Pastor Allison as well that they have a, you know, a love for this congregation mm -hmm. and this church. So. Well, I can and, assure the congregation has a love for them. Yeah. And, um, and I, I'm glad to hear, not that I would have ever questioned it, I'm glad to hear that you felt through the staff and the people that you met initially right. as being really there the front door people. Right. That you felt immediately welcomed and warm yeah. and respected um, because that's what we would want. And that really, I wouldn't expect anything else of our pastors and other members right. of our staff. Uh, God's been building a staff here that is, I think, is awesome. Yeah. And uh, they, they would have been my envy yeah. to work with a staff like this. Yeah. I've worked with a lot of great staff over right. 40 years, but I've had some that yeah, right. are difficult. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, so I'm glad that you feel at peace here. You yeah. feel good about it. And we hope you stay for a while. Yeah, no, I, I've had a great time so far. I can't complain at all. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so the little bit that you know about this church, what you're, what are you picking up about other than it's warm and welcoming? Um, what else is, are you picking up about this congregation? Because, and I'm asking you this for a certain reason because my experience has been that the person who does communications internally mm -hmm. and externally, mm -hmm. especially since part of your job is with the media, right. is that it's really important that you have an understanding of who are the people you're representing, yeah. because you are. Of course, the, you represent Jesus Christ, you represent the Church of Jesus Christ, and I understand that. But particularly, uh, First Presbyterian Church. So as you look at us and our character, have you picked up anything that stands out to you? Yeah, I, I I get the sense that it's a pretty it's a pretty diverse congregation, um, people from different backgrounds and different you know, and from what I've heard you know different ages and as well and different um, uh, places with their walk with Christ. Yes. If that makes sense. That was probably a yeah, poor way of no putting it, but um, you know it, it just seemed. Um, but it, it seems like this church is really proud of the history that it has too. Yes. Um, and that you know there's there's part of that we don't want to lose the history that we have which i totally agree with um, but there's also this need for entering that new age of um, having you know more media capabilities and stuff like that and um, doing you know from you know my first first time i met with pastor kyle he was telling me about all the outreach that this church does um, and which I think is incredibly important, especially to be, you know, in, you know, downtown New York. It's, yeah. it's important to, you know, um, kind of step up and do that outreach. And, you know, we just had that, you know, because the Palm Sunday uh, free dinner was so successful, 
they had another one right. um, just because of you know the thing uh, everything going on right now. So um, it seems like a church that is interested in in doing everything that comes with being a church. Yeah. You know, I I've heard of churches that are great at outreach, but maybe not great in another. You know, maybe not great with youth development or something like that. But it seems like this church just has a commitment. Um, uh, to go, you know, full force and to right. do everything the best they can do, uh, bleh, do everything the best they can be. Yeah, yeah. Had they in, in, in the interviews and such shared with you the visioning process we went through last year and where we came out? I think part of it, but maybe not the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. You'll, you'll probably uh, want to get a hold of the vision. Yeah. Um, whatever information that. It's all public, so you should be right. able to get your hands on it. I was one of the co-chairs okay. of it, um, and it was an awesome process because it really came from the people of God. Yeah. We were, we as the team, were listening for the voice of God through the people of God, KG. Right. And actually, while the church has been one of outreach and such it became even more apparent how much that was a passion of theirs, but we may not have been going even as far as we could. Yeah. And it gave us the impetus to move even faster and into more areas. Right. And so Delash Johnson right. is an, an, a result of that. Yeah. But uh, you've probably heard this. Uh, I say it over and over again. People will be tired of Guy Dunham saying it. But... Um, our mass media, our communications was something, oh, yeah, we need to do that. It was in the vision. Right. We'll get to it. We'll put it down here somewhere. Yeah. And the Lord said, no, yeah. I need you to do it now. Right. And uh, so that's why someone, I'm getting here, why someone like you, <laughs> with your expertise, your background, and your passion, and your faith, all those things together, KG, that's why it's so exciting to have someone sitting across from me right at this yeah. moment because I'm thinking, thank you, Lord. Thank right, you. Uh, yeah. Another answer to prayer. And he said, well, you know, I'm going to tell you where to go and then I'll actually help you yeah. get there with the right people. Yeah. And that was part of what Kyle had said, too, was that, you know, this, it was kind of a more expanded plan, but then it kind of it accelerated the process with Absolutely. Know, uh, coronavirus and everything like that. So, yeah. but I'm, I'm very happy to be here and and that, that's a, it's also exciting to be part of that, to be part of the beginning process of, you know, and see that, you know, hopefully be here for that growth, you know, over time and stuff. So. Oh, we do too. Yeah. <laughs> we do too. Um, one of the things that you and I have talked about, you were talking about the church, and you're very proud of its history, and mm -hmm. it is. It has a long history, 260 plus years. Wow. Wow. Uh, the sanctuary itself was built at the beginning of the Civil War. Don't know if you were aware of that. Um, I may have been aware of that. Okay. Actually, well, that yeah. You and I are going to be talking a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I already, I, I already gave you a heads up. Yeah, warning. I'm excited. <laughs> and uh, actually, when I heard about your background, and I said to Kyle and Allison, I said, "Oh my gosh, praise God!" And then when you told me, and yeah. I want to talk a moment about that, is that you did a documentary. Was it your senior project, or what was it? When so you did that? no, um, it, it, I was probably in my second or third year. I think it was my second year okay. uh, in the f the film major, and I kind of realized like I should do a project that I can call my own. You know, I'd done like class projects, but it was for class, and I had access to equipment that was provided by the college, and so the I I picked um, the camp that I had worked at. Um, for the, it had been a couple years at that point, um, and I had fallen in love with the camp, and I loved right. working there. And it also had, you know, there was a history to it. Maybe not 260 years, but <laughs> I mean, you know, but um, but it, there was a history to it, and there was, a, you know, this certain magic that I felt you know, surrounded it. So right. I I took a crew, and it was it was volunteers. It was friends of mine that just, you know wanted the experience and. We went and filmed a doc. We took a. It was a Saturday, um, and we we filmed. It was a short documentary. It only ended up being like eight or nine minutes, um, but it it ended up being 
it turned out better than I could have ever hoped for. And it was just a, you know, a documentary about, you know, the history and where it is now and just, you know, the health, you know, how healthy it is and all okay. of that. And so it, it was a, it ended up being, to, to date, it's been my, the thing I'm, one of the things I'm most proud of. So. Yeah, you have to send me the link. Absolutely, yeah. So I can see your work. Absolutely, yeah. Not like I know anything about it. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Still would be good to see it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, as I shared, uh, it, it's been only talked about in certain circles here, but I might as well just blurt it out right now. Um, God called me to do a documentary. Well, I didn't know it was going to be a documentary. Right. I thought it was just going to be a short little right. ditty that yeah. came out of a class I was teaching earlier in uh, January and February. And actually, it was your predecessor, Troy. We were talking about it, and I said, I need a little help. How can I take this silly little PowerPoint thing and turn it into something that's a little bit right. more sophisticated? And I began to tell him what I was already learning and hadn't even started researching. And uh, he looked at me and he said, God, that sounds like a documentary. Yeah. Whoa. And he said, yeah, like a Ken Burns type. I said, wow, brother. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, even if it's not a Ken Burns uh, yeah. type, he's like way up here. Right, right. You're familiar, of course. Oh, absolutely. I love, love Ken He Burns. is awesome. Um, I, I said I'd like to work with him, and of course he's moved on. God has right. called him to expand his music ministry. But God then called you here right. without my ever knowing that you had a background and a love for doing documentaries. Yeah, now, yeah. Is, is that crazy or is that crazy? I, it is crazy, yeah. That was, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of had that same feeling when we talked yeah, was, chilly a couple Sundays ago. I was like, wow, that, you know, already there's a, you know, hearing about an opportunity like that. It was like, wow, you know. Yeah. So this is only my second Sunday, and I'm already hearing about stuff like this. Well, Troy it's admitted, great. he said, well, I don't really know how to do it, but I could, right. we could probably figure it out together. Well, no, I don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> he, he probably was scared he left it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, actually, I, I loved him. He, yeah. He's yeah. awesome. I hope you get to meet him. Sometime. I did meet him once. He oh, seems like you? a very nice guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. But I, did. Awesome. I met him over Zoom, of course. Cause, and incredibly know, talented. Can't. And I am going to hold him to his promise that he would provide some of the music. Yeah, oh, perfect, he, yes, yes, he we'll have provide. to get a whole... That would be Ken Burns' type of right, background right. music style. Yeah, we'll have to get uh, a whole... Yeah, he could provide that. Um, but yeah, it, 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 the, the fact that Troy had the idea that I didn't even have, I just right. had a seed. Right. He had the idea, but he wasn't the one. And, and this is the way God works, doesn't he? Absolutely, KG? yeah. We oftentimes are a link in a chain. We don't know where we come. Right. We don't know how much of a part we play in it, but oftentimes we're not all of it. We're a right. part of it. And, and I see that e even with me doing whatever needs to be done, I realize that God's going to be calling in a whole bunch of other people right. into putting this together because there's an incredible story to be told about First Presbyterian, not just for a point of pride. Right. That's okay. But of inspiration and aspiration and what God has been doing in this church for two, over two and a half centuries. Right. And that what I find in congregations, I did a lot of interim work, mm -hmm. is congregations oftentimes have DNA, things that make them who they are from generation to generation, especially if they've been around for a long time. Right. Some of that's not so good when you find the DNA and it's dysfunctional and it doesn't always work well. But in other cases, their DNA, um, they don't realize why they do what they do now. It's because of everyone who's come before them. Right. It's had this cumulative effect spiritually, however God does that. And God tends to call people into congregations of like mind, of spiritual gifts, of mindset, and that's why I believe he called you here. Right for this moment in time, just like I'm here for this moment in time. Right. Absolutely, just one yeah. chapter, however short it may be. Yeah. But that the story, part of it, and not the whole, but particular themes of this congregation need to be told in such a way that it's not only auditory but visual so that people can appreciate right. it. A lot of our folks know bits and pieces and some know nothing. Right, right. 
So I'm excited about it. I'm doing a lot of research, and let me t I'm bug-eyed. Uh, I've now pulled Cindy Fields in because she does ancestry work for oh, okay. people. Yeah. And she's excited about doing some of the work for me because uh, she loves to do that, or I get bug-eyed. <laughs> uh, but I know you'll do the technical. Yeah, uh, it, and advisory stuff. It's super exciting for me too, just Good. to yeah, to think about that. And I know it might be a little bit ways off, and there's you know, well, it's going to take a while, right? But it is exciting. But yeah. it took Burns nine years or something to do the Civil War. I don't know, but that's series. a masterpiece. I love the Civil War. Oh, it's uh, incredible. Yeah, yeah. And when you consider the technology, he did not. I know it came out in 1990. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It started in '83. Yeah, that's crazy. And all they would do, I was, I was listening to some guys who were talking about the technology or, or the, all the, how they did it. And when you'd see a picture, and then he zeroes in, and then he moves, they did that all with just a videotaping. Yeah. And they do it so it's like you're looking at it, and then your eyes are moving, so they're right. actually causing you to move right. across. You don't even know you're doing but, it. But now you can just put a picture into an editing software yes. on a computer, and it, it's literally called the Ken Burns effect, and you know you, yeah. you, know, you just punch that oh, in, really? and it's really easy. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, we'll it's, some of that. It's much easier nowadays, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, it, it's, it was incredible what he, and, and he really worked with someone else, and I don't remember right. his name right now, but a historian. And, uh, just awesome. So yeah. I, I am really looking forward to it. Yeah. Of course, I need to sit down and talk to you in greater detail about yeah, the absolutely. overall idea. Um, yeah, if it's of God, it, it will come to fruition. Right. And I promise the congregation I will get it done before I go to my great reward. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> That's earlier than I think, but I'm hoping that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, no, really, I, I think it'll be awesome. So that's exciting. Um, what, what are some of your hopes and aspirations as you're going to be here for a while, working in our midst, um, not only in your position, but for your own personal faith walk and such? Yeah. Well, I mean, graduating college kind of, I mean, graduating high school is a step and then graduating college is another step. Forces, you know, that old cliche, I'm going out into the real world and I'm not finally an adult, and I, I've, yeah. you know, that hit me pretty hard, you know, come, finally being an adult. So um, I felt like coming into this position to start, I was, you know, I felt this could be a great opportunity for me to grow okay. um, in, you know, my faith, because I think it's always growing and changing, and, you know, I, I don't think I'm ever satisfied with how my faith is, you yeah. know what I mean? I, I just feel like I can always grow with that, you know, um, just not being perfect, you know. Um, but yes, and I, you know, obviously have goals for this position and for, you know, building up the, the media capabilities of this church and, yeah. um, and having, you know, more of a footprint in that regard and uh, being able to say that I helped with that. And, right. um, you know, and I, and I you know, I, I do think you know, I, I don't know what the future holds or what, where I'll, you know, where it'll lead me. Or, um, but to be able to say, you know, I came in when the church needed my help and I was able to help it and um, help it grow. And, you know, I, I feel like that would be, you know, a good thing for me to take away um, or at least be able to say. So. Well, we have some incredibly talented people here, as you're probably already finding out, yeah. in a variety of oh, areas, okay. including this kind of thing, the technology, having Chris Hunter. Oh, he's been, he's made it so easy for me. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Oh, he's made it so easy for me to come in. He is yeah. my right arm. Oh, he's uh, I told him a long time ago, brother, I don't want to do it. You just make me look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like, yeah. And that's not easy to make guy look good. But he, he has been awesome. However, he's a volunteer. Right, right. And. We all know that you know you can push volunteers farther than what, but to actually have someone come here on right. staff and has the professional training in the background and such, you'll have plenty of volunteers there to work with you. Um, but no question about it, they'll be supporting you and looking to you and, and really eager.
to to receive your wisdom and your knowledge. Uh, yeah. I think that's just is is awesome. And this is an important time right. in our history once again. Right. And the media part of it has been lacking. For a long time, I always said First Presbyterian is one of the best kept secrets. And that's not what you want to be, right. is the best kept secret. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was, I, though, although I will say I was impressed that, you know, I, I feel like there are some churches that I know Christian kind of said it was a bit of a scramble when all of the restrictions came and they weren't doing any stream. I was impressed that at least they did something about it. You know, yes. they didn't, you know, they, they took quick action. They didn't, yes. you know, no one kind of sat back and waited too long and thought, what do we do? It was, okay, then that means we need to do this and this and this. And yeah. So. And we've had to learn. We've mm -hmm. been learning as we go along on, on any number of the things. Right. And they will probably evolve. And they will go through different stages when the one purpose isn't the same, then we'll move to another. But, uh, right. That's just all a part of what God's doing. God called us to it, and we didn't even know it. And that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, it, that's what faith is, isn't it? Yeah. We don't always know what's coming. No. Just yeah. step by step. Just got to trust. Yeah. 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 Well, KG, thank you. So That wasn't so painful, was it? No, not at all. It was good. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. No, thank uh, you for having me. Yeah. Uh, no problem. And uh, I, I know that people who do your kind of work are oftentimes the people behind the scenes. Right. But you're the people that make it happen. Yeah. And I know that as time goes on and people say, wow, that was really neat. We're doing that. Um, you won't be forgotten. We'll, we'll know who it is. Yeah. And uh, we'll be always grateful that you're behind the scenes doing what God's gifted you to do and impassioned you to do and called you to do uh, for this period of time here at First Presbyterian. So we look forward to uh, weeks, months, uh, years, yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah. Ahead, brother. Yeah. So good. I would love to shake your hand. Right, I know. It's I know. illegal. It's, like, uh, it's uh, illegal. Uh, hold so. myself back. Yeah. And if you're a hugger, we do Yeah, that. yeah, a little <laughs> air hug, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. And folks, that concludes another episode of Hey First Prez, What's Up? Keep watching for us on the website. And until we see you again, we're wishing you grace and peace in our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, happy day.